it out or if they will go one and one. But as we mentioned, right, they need the second game to go 500 for the split so you can bet that they won it. Yep, and Cog trying to find the third win of their season, making sure that they're finding victory outside of just beating enemy, basically. Isis first banned out, no surprise there. But Cog, they're not going to, they're still going to take out the Guardians, but it's not going to be targeted at Dare to Care. They're going to be taking away Polar Bear Mike's Geb, which basically just had infinitely more success than Homie FA's Guan last year. Yeah, time. they got rid of that in a hurry. Uh, and, and Eager, there's not a lot of teams out there. I would say there's only three or four teams that are regularly willing to first pick Geb. Um, but showing that you can do it and doing it with that kind of gumption frees up a pick like Athena. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's Dare to Care. It's the up. best pick that this team can make, honestly. There's not a better god that they can draft. It's played very well in the support role for the... I just assume Polar Bear might can play it well because he plays everything else well. And we know Dare to Care can wreck within the jungle. And guess what? Anatoly paved the way for Guardians of the Soul Lane with this god. I have a question. Do you think that Cog drafted that Ymir to take it away from Eager? Or are they... Is that a god they prioritize themselves? I would say that's definitely a, a shot at Eager. Eager loves Ymir. They can play it in three different roles, right? They can play mm -hmm. it solo, jungle, and in the support role. Uh... So overall, that's probably a shot more eager than it is necessarily does, a pick. Does that them. kind of hurt yourself when you first pick to take it away from the enemy, especially if that's something you're not commonly you don't commonly run? As long as you have a decent understanding of the character, taking away comfort picks is always a really okay. strong idea to go to. And eager has drafted probably the best three picks you could make in terms of your core positions, right? I mean, I mean, this uh, is actually the most played god by Lassus. Poseidon yeah. is very comfortable for him. Uh, they love it as not only does he have the insane burst potential, but he additionally has the whirlpool, the cripple and slow multiple times during a team fight coming into great effect. Also, shoutouts to Neath, by the way. Heartseeker hasn't been nerfed yet. What's up, girl? Why is no one picking Neath in Con? It's like 100 gold Neath more Neath is now. a character that doesn't have that late game potential carry as far as other hunters yeah, go. Yeah, but she was but picked like 30 times this split. She was. I think characters come in and out of popularity and people forget that other characters are just as strong. It, legitimately, it's that. It's that Heartseeker Neath was dominating mid lanes for five weeks, and then people were like, oh, yeah, but Agni Poseidon. Exactly. Remember that? Did people learn more more so that how to counter these picks? It, yes. It's also hard to play against something. When you have a pick you've never gone against, people go, whoa, I don't know how to play against it, so I'm just going to pick it. If I can't play against it, I'm going to play it. Okay. And then eventually, once you get enough practice, you can learn what goes against it. Well, Eager didn't like what they saw in the last game, neither did Cog. Uh, two of the four gods that were played in the last game are banned out. Giannis, Alquang. Geb and Sobek have gone bye-bye. Cognitive banned out three Guardians versus the Eager lineup. And, well, there's still plenty in the pool. Whoa, okay. Okay. All right, boys. Solo or jungle? And con. Ha has to be jungle. Okay. Yikes. Has to Cognitive be. Cognitive gaming. It's their last game of the split. You know what? I like it. Throw it out there. Oh, remember Thor? Remember how he's like, you know, top three junglers in the game and he just gets drafted ninth overall? Okay. He was solo. Epsilon played him solo. You yeah, it know. looked really bad. Very. No, he he beat he won his lane really well. versus a sub playing Apollo. Hey, Apollo can mess. That out being the said, spin. right? I guess it can be done, but <laughs> yes, with no sustain. No, it's not. It's really it's not gonna happen. <laughs> <regularly>. Really, <laughs> really weird. But um, yeah, so Thor Bologna rounding out this lineup. Why not Thor? Basically a warrior. Bologna definitely a warrior. Athena Bologna front line will be fine. Thor can bring the initiation, and they have taunt into every ult that could ever be in the game. I mean, it's like the taunt into Kraken, into Deuce Ultimate, into it's, Thor Ultimate, into Bologna Ultimate. It's a very similar This is the best pick comp. the Cognitive could have made. And I can say that with 100% confidence that against a lineup that is very heavily AoE CC oriented, Tier is by far the best pick you can make as your solo laner. I mean, just his passive can't be locked down for more than one second. He also needs, he does need to be careful though against Whirlpool. He's going to be crippled out, basically taking away every single one of his skills, every single one of his gap closers outside of Lawbringer. But if he can get, especially against Poseidon in the back line, even then, it, it's going to be hard. Fearless is going to get CC'd by a lot of things. Yeah, it's, uh, well, this whole lineup, right? The Medusa, Poseidon, Thor, Bologna is okay. And it all, Athena is the rug that ties the room together in this situation, right? She makes this all work. Um, besides that, it's, it's a little bit of kind of a, you got a Thor stun that's a little bit unreliable into a Kraken that's a little unreliable into a Medusa ultimate that's a little unreliable. You know, it's, it's not that really guaranteed stun, but now with Tectonic Rift and the Taunt, it should be a pretty fair game and, and, uh, and an easy game to control, at least from Eager. We'll see if Cognitive okay, can snowball. Okay, I understand wards in the lane. Why did Eager ward mid lane at 30, 40 seconds before minion spawn? 
I would have to assume that Dare is going to be looking for an early rotation gank onto this mid lane, and they want to know exactly where he is, uh, or if the other jungler is going to be rotating towards that way. It's a very interesting ward placement, though. Okay. Um, I do not likely see an invade coming out from either team. Uh, both have very strong compositions. It looks like Eager is getting ready for a three camp start. Why? I know I know AFK does this a lot. What's the difference between three camp or two camp? What? What's your mindset going into that? The three camp start, specifically on the support side, will hit you level five uh, if you can get to the lane fast enough for the mid harpies, especially for characters like Medusa that have this giant ultimate. If you can have that level five before the mid harpies spawn, then you can guarantee win that fight, uh, even if you don't get the mid harpies. So basically you're saying if you want to fight at those mid camps with your level fives, you're going to go to the three camp. Exactly. Okay. More reliable to hit level five more often versus uh, requiring a perfect split of camps, I guess, uh, to get there and, and be there consistently level five and able to contest there. And I, I think that's an interesting point you bring up, especially about Medusa, right? Is that that big AoE is so good in team fights and so good at that level five contest, but as a CC is a little bit unreliable as they can just turn their back to it and not get locked out. But of course you have Athena who makes you look at her, so. You know, GG. <laughs> and an early rotation coming out from Bickham there. He's going to get spot. I mean, he'll be spotted when he walks in a lane, but also but it's the right choice, by that right? ward. No way that Naja is posturing up in that solo lane and like uh, pushing them off the wave and getting any kind of advantage. I Might mean, as well just go leech off He mage. would have to basically stun out Thor's spin, and at that point, he's putting himself in right. a bad he's spot. Gotten, he's taken 100 damage from minions at that point. So come to the mid lane where it's a little bit safer, and the mage is clear the wave. You can just stand back and I don't know. Just, Spirit ring. Uh, it, Probably just looking for early aggression. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't invade back harpies, but at the same time, back harpies aren't up. That's also another hey. strength for these early back harpies is that they're not spawning in time if you have early rotations. It's great watching you them. put that together live. And I'm just like, oh, wait, they did them already. <laughs> we just talked about this. Uh oh, Heroin in some trouble. Uh, he's going to dash away from that one. Dare to Care still got a nice angle and a Bickham for some bonus in hand attacks, but they didn't clear that wave, so Dare to Care actually eats about half of his HP pool, uh, and, and it ends up being not maybe as clean of a trade as it could have been. Yeah, double tap. Woo! Herwin's gonna eat a lot of damage there, and he's gonna have a hard time walking up to this wave. If Lassus can find a whirlpool under his feet, he's likely to take a spill. Wow. Look at this. Look at this solo lane matchup. Did Meerkat really buy Death's Toll first item? Yeah, he bought a lot of potions as well. But Is Tyr an in-hander now? Not going his way right now. Incon, help me out here, buddy. What's going on? Uh, Tier solo lane right now, Death Toll. Because of the bluestone pendant nerf, uh, Death Toll being a very popular start for the solo laners allows you to grab a lot of potions and have a lot of sustain for the lane, so you don't have to back for Ah, uh, Fair enough. A lot of in-hands uh, to keep you get you sustained out until those abilities can take over and clear the wave completely. Both are going to hit five at the same time. Uh, who are you going to give the advantage to in that lane? Tier versus Bologna. Tier versus Bologna, I think it comes less down to that lane. I can't imagine any of them soloing each other with mm -hmm. how tanky they're going to be. It's really going to come down to who brings more to these mid team fights at these uh, mid harpies, which are going to be spawning in about 20 seconds here. I give the mid team fight, though, to Eager with that Poseidon ultimate. They're actually looking to try and catch out Homie FA here. Looks like he's spotted. But he's, yeah, they're going to recognize that it's coming. Yeesh. Derek here is actually going to miss his ult, but Famous Hate, he's going to be locked in place with that cripple. Yeah, that's Glasses that. finds first blood. That looked, uh, I mean, you know, there's not a lot of players that, that this works for. Dare to care getting credited for the first one there, but all things told, like, it's... I don't know how, but Lassus always seems to be able to just walk up and crack in people. Like, all, all, all other Poseidons that play this mage in the mid lane, like, they have to, like, set up these elaborate stun combinations to get it to work and, like, I, place are cracking where they're going to be. Lassus is just, like, it's just, like, the aura of the player. I want to say it's, like, ward knowledge and knowing that they're not going to have wards there and know that he's rotating, but at the same time, is Lassus really thinking that? It, I mean... Maybe. I think Lassus just... I don't, I don't know that Lassus does a lot of thinking when he plays. I think it's more of an instinct thing for that's, him. That's what I'm saying. he's always kind of played the game. But yeah, somehow he just he just has the feel for the game where he knows he can just walk right in and throw the Kraken and it's going to hit. I mean, he did Whirlpool out, and it was a nice combo with Dare to Care stun, so I, it was there. But the fact that they're able to not only rotate, but find the kill in the dual lane, right? At first, it's like, okay, they're looking to catch the dual lane of Cog rotating. Yeah. Oh, they're not going to do it, but they're still able to get the kill. Well, perhaps the most important part of that kill is it does force Famous Hate back, and he's forced to buy Devo's Gloves too, which if you have played this game in the Hunter Roll, you Ooh. know is near certain death for your lane. 
You you lose at least three minutes, right? That next three minutes, four minutes maybe, you are an unhappy camper. How often does Allied cry when he has to when he dies early and has to back and can't finish his stacking items? At this point, Allied doesn't die anymore because he just sits under the tower. You can't <laughs> die when you're under your tier two tower at two he's minutes. So, so. good. From <laughs> so good from behind. Did you know he actually has identical stats to Barracuda except one GPM less? Oh, well, that's why he's not the best hunter in North America, isn't it? <laughs> Clearly. That's why he's not even in the conversation. One gold. Get out of here. Come on. Where's Alan? Brandon when you need him to talk about the one gold and why it matters? He gold, really would. He would. He would tell you. He would tell Dude, you exactly. How hey, look, gold? games go 29 minutes. That's 29 gold. That's a lot of gold. Famous hate getting taunted out here, taking a lot of poke. It's really important. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon just ran onto the set to defend his honor. Was he arguing the one gold or the 13 gold? I'm oh. not sure. The one oh. GPM or the 13 gold? Well, hey, guys, it's one to nothing for Eager. You saw that first one credited to Dare to Care on his Thor. I spent a little bit more action around the map, but nothing has been successful. And uh, for all of the uh, the conjecturing about how painful it would be to have your Devo's gloves finish late, Apollo's back to lane with Devo's gloves before Medusa, so everything goes out the window. Why is COG drafting these, I wouldn't say unpopular, but not very common... Spicy. Spicy Guardians. They've drafted Guan, and now they've drafted Jimir. What are they looking to get out of the support? I mean, is it because... Wait, 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 wait. You're talking about non-conventional picks, and you're talking about Amir instead of the Naja? It... <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Amir, we've seen some play out of him. Obviously, uh, Cognitive not known for their Amir play specifically, but I'm sorry, continue on. <laughs> why, why are they drafting these support picks that aren't the, the Gebs, the Athenas, the Sylvanases? I would imagine that they're looking to throw Eager off. You know, it's one of those things where if you haven't gone against a certain character, particularly the Polar Bear Mike, who's very new to the scene, mm -hmm. he's only going against these main meta characters, put him against something he's not used to, and maybe he doesn't know exactly how to play the matchup. Okay. And, and now, why did they pick Naja? Is it just to, to stun out the Thor's spin? Could be. Kraken's going to use on pick coming. Well, Naja does not have a very high HP pool. Home of Fae also is yeah. in trouble. Yeah, Dare going down. juked that freeze. You saw him actually yeah, walk away from in it. the spin move around Ymir, dodging it out. Yeah, and that was maybe a little bit of unfamiliarity on the character for Home of Fae there. I mean, it, it, where was this wall? Did he, he must have used it just off camera. We must not have seen it, but I feel like a wall there maybe saves him. It's possible. Does he have the? Does he have boots yet? Yeah. I mean, he just bought boots, though. He may not have had them no, completed. No, he had them. He had okay. the I'm not sure, then. Hmm. Interesting. All around. So, let's talk a little bit about putting Polar Bear Mike on the Athena here uh, and drafting the Thor. Um, is there something about Cognitive's lineup uh, in con that you think it prompted them to put the Athena into the support role? I think it was more so looking at what options were left on the table. If they didn't put Athena in the support role, they were going to put Polar Bear Mike on a very strange support at that point. Uh, when you have a character like Thor open and you have uh, people who can play all these different gods, might as well just grab a better god and then throw the Athena in the support yeah, role. I mean, Bacchus, the only guardian. Yeah, so left Bonnie to be able to go back. Everyone was banned out. Yeah, it's a, it's a, unless they, you want to like Kabrak and support. Well, they could take a Kumba. And they could have taken a Kumba. Take Kumba. You, you don't like you Kumba? Would... No, Kumba's not. When your you wave clear is also your getaway skill. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. It works for Agni, though. That man, though, he's actually going to charge the ult. Famous Hate should be able to get away just in time. But Bickham, he's actually going in. I, it, it's I not enough. I don't think it's enough damage no. you have to kill. And now it may be enough damage for Bickham to die. Universe Ring Toss going to secure that one. Home of going to get a nice stun there as well. Famous Hate looks like he's out of this one. Here Damn. comes Heroin doing quite a bit of damage. And it will be enough to kill Dare to Care. So this is... A pretty important turnaround for Cognitive Gaming. They get a couple of high-value kills. Dare to Care and Zatman. Uh, the Hunter and the Carry. In addition, oh, well, they're going to lose Helm of Fate here, but that's eh, just the way the cookie crumbles. No, sometimes. he's got oh. one health left, and Alasis oh, could my. be turned on. They're uh -oh. both uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, it bounced once more off the minions, too. The Just the luck bounces forever from Bickham, catching him out of position there. Universe Ring Toss doing a lot of work, and Cognitive Gaming has opened up themselves. A nice attempt to the Gold Fury here. Uncontestable. This is, this is not an Eager. attempt. This is going to be free here. You can already see it. 50% health left, Zatman with no ult, and still walking past his tier 2. Cog gonna find three kills in that engagement and the Gold Fury. And during all of this, Anatoly forced out of lane by Meerkat, and he'll have a one level advantage. Cognitive turns the corner there, even with all those kills in the early game for Eager, they've taken back the Gold lead. Experience, same story, although it's basically even. Doors in the air, and this could be a bad look for Bickham here, oh, but Dare to Care just off the, the mark. Dream. Dare to Care, please. The spin may be enough. No, it's stunned out one more. The heal. Healing up from the activation! Of the flaming spear. I forgot about that. Naja showing off that new kit. Turn I up. forgot about that. Yeah, for those who don't know, Naja in the recent patch, now uh, based on the hits he gets from jungle minions, creeps, and players, stacks up his passive and he's able to turn those into a heal when activating his two. And Meerkat is actually going to save his own speed buff. Yeah, looks like he did get it. it. And now they're going to trade. 
Okay. That was awesome. Oh, no. No, Anatoly did get it with that hog after they fell. Bickham's mad. Yeah, Bickham's very mad. Bickham dies and then gets his speed buff taken. That's like the absolute worst thing that can happen. Zatman in some trouble here. Yeah, he's dead. Should be enough with the uh, Glacial Strike. Indeed it is. Famous Hate. And now they have Polar Bear Mike in just the worst position. Boom goes the Dynamite. Home of Fate credited with a double kill. Cog looking is very win this game? good. I don't know. Homie F.A., uh, he seems to have turned it around this game. What's he doing better in game two? He's really bringing this aggression onto the Athena. Ymir is a character that thrives in this early game environment. Athena more oriented towards the late game team fight, and he's really abusing it with the extra damage that he has over them right now. I think it's pretty important that they take that first gold fury, and Amir only has the hog one versus the hog three of Athena, right? She's itemized into this specifically to take that first objective, doesn't get it, and now that blink that Amir's purchased and, and foregoing that hog three, there's no risk there now. And he has a couple minutes to recoup uh, 600 gold to go ahead and level that item up, potentially gets into a steel mail before he has to do it. He also gets Lassus's beads one right there. Very important. Uh, Lassus 180 now, cooldown. yeah, three minutes now he's going to be basically very gankable. So gank. Ten minutes into this one, five to three in favor of Cognitive Gaming. They've enjoyed now a 2,000 gold lead, taking it back from what once was a 1,500 gold lead from Eager. 2,000 experience as well in their favor. Thor ult coming in. Meerkat taking quite a bit of damage. Over the top comes Anatoly. Well executed. And that's, uh, there well. There's just no wards. There's only one ward on the map Let's take right a look at now. wards placed. For Cognitive Gaming. Zero and wards still, for tier. Right, there's four, five, six, seven wards uh, coming out from the entirety of COG, and that's... That's the one thing that it's like, let's... If you're watching this game back and you're cognitive gaming, and both times we've pulled up this wards chart at about this point as the laning phase is getting mature and moving into where we're going to see more team fights, it's been a three or four ward to zero or one ward comparison in the soul lane specifically, and we've seen some trouble for Meerkat as a result of that. The Gankatep coming out on the left side lane onto Zatman is unsuccessful for cognitive gaming. It's three members over here, the Naja rotating it as well. They get that lopsided... A uh, power play, but unable to convert it into a kill. And Zatman with those Zivos gloves, well, he's perfectly happy to just farm right away. What's your mindset now for COG? Uh, do they want to keep trying for these ganks, or do they want to group up and look more for pushing towers? and team fighting in their enemy jungle. They need to be very careful right now for team fights. If you look at the opposing team, an Athena taunt into a Kraken ult at any point can be absolutely detrimental. They need to make sure they avoid that combo, preferably looking for a pickoff like they've been doing on the Zap and after a pickoff forcing the fight when one of these big monster ultimates are down. And oh, is that man. He should be fine. I mean, Famous Hate there, no sprint available. If that was Zapman man, <laughs> basic Zap man, Zap man would have gone in. But was Zatman there when Zatman didn't go to Worlds? But Zatman was at Worlds. Zatman won Worlds. Zatman oh. won Worlds. That, he, oh, I forgot he won Worlds. Every Zatman's time. Zatman's a very accomplished player. <laughs> Let's be honest. Hey, solo lane, guess what they have? Mystical Males. Much rejoicing. They're yeah, done. But and Boots. Uh, something interesting here. Meerkat did not go Mystical Mail and teleport. He went Blink. So we're going back to the Blink tier, which doesn't normally he synergize. He had that at like minute one. He loaded out with Yeah, it. I saw that. But it doesn't normally synergize with Mystical Mail. What's your mindset here? Actually, we could have a big fight. Polar Bear Mike eats the full duration of that stun, but they haven't really dumped much more into him. And here comes, well, the old Kraken Aegis. into Aegis problem that uh, Poseidon had and why he fell out of the meta to begin with. Famous Hate with... That's a Zatman play. That's what we're looking for there. Fearless Chain is going to keep Polar Bear oh, Mike in an awkward position, but a beautiful wall from Dare to Care. Let's take a look at the backside of the fight there where Naja has just taken Zatman for a ride. Back down into that Amir ultimate. And now maybe some of the strategy becoming clear. Naja setting up that big channel to Amir ultimate. Rotating back in is your Athena, but too little too late. They lose their carry and that, their mid laner. I, I'm surprised that that didn't go more in favor of Cognitive Gaming. They did win it two for one, but there were so many players that were low, and Cog just couldn't seem to find the kills. That wall. It was the, the Derek Care wall there to like Polar Bear Mike to turn them from getting really, really ugly. Right, so they kill Mike there, they get Gold Fury, mm -hmm. who's just come back up. What's... Actually, Anatoly could be... An, no. It's just Mystical Mail. He doesn't really have full damage yet. It's just about being tanky and that 40 tick damage. Derek Care actually finds himself some free farm during that period as well over in the solo lane. Enjoying now level 13, but Bickham has caught up to him. He was down a level as well, but Naja on his way. Now his Jotun's Wrath done in tandem with Thor, who has finished his Jotun's Wrath as well, but moving towards that Deathbringer. And, uh, Thor will not enjoy another power spike like the one Naja is going to get. Thor pretty much is at his maximum capacity in terms of damage output and kill potential at this stage of the game. Now it's about kind of keeping it at that level and getting some defensive items, but Gold Fury this is free. eager still, you know, they just took too much damage, too much poke in that last engagement, lost two very important Dares in the laners, air. and not much they could do out of that. Dare to care. He's just forced to farm up some minions here with his uh, his ultimate, it looks like. Yep, gonna have to take the safe now, route and land. 
was that just Cog being smart, or was that Eager? Was Eager giving that up, do you think, since they just spent everything? That seemed Eager, honestly, being a little bit unprepared. That last team fight uh, was just a little bit too early for that Gold Fury for Cog to do it. It should have been in favor of Eager to be able to come back after the reset and be ready for that. Oh, Zatman narrowly avoiding what could have very well been a kill there. He'd been frozen out of the dash and then walled. And a lot of damage will come up. Bickham, uh, well, showing you a little bit about why Naja is not a tremendously popular pick. That HP pool is very, very small. His ult was available. He just didn't really think that that damage was going to come Yeah, I don't through. think he thought he was going to die to it, but it's hard to judge. I mean, especially if you're not playing Naja all the time. I mean, he basically has the same HP pool as Hubla. Mm -hmm. He's a mage for all intents and it, purposes. It's, it's hard. In terms of base stats, it's tough. Additionally, we've seen Homie Efe here three or four times now come in underneath this lane and look to pick off Zap. And Zap, for the most part, has done a good job avoiding this. He's going to find Anatoly in the jungle here. Dare to Care is going to be there as well. They're going to be the Athena. Oh, it's going to be a big fight here at the blue buff on the right-hand side. Bologna Bludgeon actually missing a bulk of that damage. Polar Bear Mike, he's going to be able to taunt Homafe back in. It looks like he's going to be the target. And yes, it's going to be an easy kill to secure. And now Tyr in a lot of trouble. Is this going to Lawbringer juke the Thor, or is Thor going to land on the other side? No. They stood there and looked at each other. No, I'm sorry. That was just a little bit of a lag spike. Meerkat's going to miss the Fearless Chain. He's going to stun out anyway. There comes the Lawbringer. Polar Bear Mike should have another taunt available any moment here. Not able to close the distance. And Naja, well, maybe a ring toss for good trouble here. Herwin's here as well. They might try and pick someone off. Anatoly's ult should be down, but doesn't look like they're going to catch up to him in time. Yeah, oh. can't, can't close the distance there. Anatoly's going to dash out of that bomb combination. Looking at our Hunter's Famous Hate and Zapman, well, they're just trading back and forth. No Three big levels, though, here. on Famous Hate. They put a lot of pressure onto this, oh, but right my. now, Lassus, like you said earlier, he can just find the ult How sometimes. does that work? Herwin had Aegis and Beads. I know, Herwin had Aegis and Beads, and Lassus just finished Spears of Magis and just erases. I mean, I guess Herwin was, maybe he was in comms, maybe he was thinking, maybe he was talking, and just unable to get out of that one, but with Beads, Aegis, uh, honestly, unforgivable. What's... Okay, so now Cognitive Gaming, they had this big lead, but it seems to be Eager are still being the aggressors in the fight. Is this what Eager's looking to do? Is this more Eager being strong or Cognitive not taking advantage of the lead they gained early? I think this might be a bit of a lack of experience right here. Cognitive Gaming having two gold series right now on Eager really should have a good advantage going into these fights, but they're even down one kill right now. They're not taking advantage of this extra experience, extra gold. Famous Hate has a two-level lead on Zaman. They need to be taking advantage and forcing fights, and they're just getting picked off, and it's going to allow Eager to catch up. Yeah, one of the things that's, that's keeping Eager really close here is is the tower disparity with that tier one in the right side soul lane going down to Bologna. Bit of extra gold, especially for that support player in Polar Bear Mike. That little bit of extra gold is keeping him just about 500 away from where the Amir is. And Amir looks like he's itemizing into a winged blade here as his third item. What do you think about that, Incon? Wing Blade's a very strong item, particularly for Ymir, because Ymir does not have any built-in escapes into his kit. The only thing he can do is try to freeze you and wall himself off. I would have rather seen him honestly go into a Magi's Blessing early against this team. Very high CC on this Eager squad. Meerkat now, no tower available, and four it's players everything, but it, trying to finish matter. him off. His Lawbringer is going to come through, but I mean, there's no way for him to get out of this, is there? No. This is Cog's fight to re-engage there. Meerkat barely escaped. There comes the Kraken, but now Heroin hits the Aegis, and he's going to dash away from there. Cog, it looked like they could have counter-engaged after really eager spit everything coming in, and maybe here's the first kill, but Anatoly's too tanky. It's going to be very, very close. Will they get a ring toss out of this one? Will the bounce come? No. Yes. Yes, it will. Home of a credited for that kill. Um, every single ultimate was used by Eager to not kill Tyr, who then somehow decided that it would be a good idea to go continue farming. These Dare to Care Thor ults right now are honestly looking a bit like weekends. They're hey. They have not been on point this game. He really needs to be getting closer to those skills. He's been dropping a lot of kills this game. He needs to figure out what's wrong. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right there. Uh, of course, you're right. You're the professional player. But uh, yeah, all things told, it seemed that Eagers had all the right opportunities, but have missed a little bit of execution here. Last is having a great game once beside him, but uh, it, it takes more than one player to, to really make it all happen in terms of these big team-oriented ganks. Famous Hate di dives past the Tier 2 there for Zatman. In the meantime, getting credit for that kill. Three deaths on the Zatman as well. A little bit uncharacteristic. Heroin in some trouble, but the beautiful CC chain from Meerkat's going to prevent that from being too good of an exchange. Dare to care. Should get run down here by the Naja with the speed buff. Yeah, stun. Both of them have stuns. There's actually oh. beats for cooldown, but Bickham's going to miss. Can he find the universal ring toss? Is it's he max tilted? range. It's going to be no, just barely there. And he's going to spin an alt for it. 
Yeah. Well, you know, now he's dead to Tully, so. Oh, man. Bickham's actually, he walked back in a tower and tanked it, and Meerkat kind of left him to die there. Meerkat had all his cooldowns, and he just let Bickham die, but positive of gaming. Space created. Yep, they're going to look to do this gold here. Only Zapman's alive, but he's a couple levels down. He's just one level down from Famous Hate now. I think that's the bigger story. Yeah, that's a huge gap to close. Trying to just zone him out as Home of Fae. You can see not looking to expend too many spells here. And not going to find that CC as Zapman. Cognitive getting the Gold Fury. In comes the Taunt from Athena. Famous Hate quite low here on the Apollo. Trying to dash away, but a little bit off the mark there, unfortunately, with the dash. It's caught up on the wall. Meerkat going to eat some dots. And Tully trying to continue to search forward, but no more cooking for Team Eager. They still enjoy the kill lead, but are down in cold. And uh, maybe even doubly so now that that Gold Fury has been dropped in favor of Cog. It seems three Gold Furies now in favor of Cog. They have that Gold lead, but the experience lead is dead even. Eager's just team fighting better. So, I mean, if this game ends at 20, 29 or 28 minutes, right? If it ends the next 10 minutes in Con, who do you think wins? If it ends in the next 10 minutes, you're looking at Cognitive Gaming. They've now, if it ends in the next 20, big, what do you think? Next 20, Eager. Okay, so Eager takes it. Eager becomes has the better, the better late game, team fight. Better late team game. fight. They have way too much crowd control. Is that man way out of position here? That man, that's his fourth death, I believe. But I, yeah. it's still, right? He's he's died four times, and he's still only one level behind Famous Hate. He's staying relevant. Even the builds are very close. Although, we do see Famous has invested more into actives. It doesn't seem he's getting much use out of them. Well, if you if you call game one, right, they were fairly even, but Zatman had that big active advantage mm -hmm. and allowed him to find some kills. So maybe Famous Hate, you know, looking to put the pressure on the same way. But you're right, Zatman... A nice individual performance to close the gap of well, about three levels to get back up to parity with Famous Hate. But really, I think, and you were talking about this earlier, it's, it's got to be more of looking at Famous Hate and saying, how was he not able to continue that snowball? What went wrong for Cognitive Gaming? They're really running out of opportunities here. They, uh, they've been taking a great opportunity to get these gold fairies while Eager's been forcing fights on the right side of the map, but they're not making any plays from it. They're not winning enough in these team fights to get towers down to continue their snowball. They're just kind of coming out a little bit on top, which just makes them reset and look for another fight. And there it is. Yeah, no towers down on the side of, of Eager, but maybe the first to fall, and certainly the first to fall is Famous Hate. We'll get credited with the duo lane tower on the left side there. Easy peasy. But, I mean, in a game that's, you know, we're, well, we're 22 minutes in, essentially, with 22 kills on the board. It's in a very fast-paced game. you got to think that favors this cognitive lineup. If there's a lot of kills happening, it's to their credit. As Incon mentioned to you, it's a more early-game-focused team. But is Eager just too close? Is that 4,000 gold that Cognitive's ahead enough to carry them to a victory? you got to think it's going to be Fire Giant that's going to open things up for them, right? If they can take a Fire Giant with this modest advantage, item up, they have their Deathbringer on Naja, she'll be able to find a pick relatively easily, and then erase three or four towers, all of a sudden this lead doubles very quickly. I mean, outside of picks, it seems that Eager is being the aggressors. As Cognitive Gaming, do you still want to play passive look to counter-engage? You're really looking to initiate here. You may oh. have taken a great opportunity. That's a nice wall. Almost going to find enough to find a kill there. Slow coming out from Zatman, but he's stunned out by the Noxious Fumes follow-up to the Flame Dash. Um, is, so Lassus, let's look at Lassus itemization here. Is this a gem? Or is it Ethereal? It's upcoming stash, so it's 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 either Gem of Iso or Ethereal stash. I would go Gem of Isolation at this point. Lassus really likes to give those items that give him a lot of damage, that give him a lot of crowd control. Gem of Isolation combined with Whirlpool on Poseidon is one of the more annoying combinations oh, in the entire game. I, it took, I think, what, three or four patches to get the amount of pull that Poseidon's Whirlpool did correct so that it wasn't just complete lockdown yeah, with Gem of Isolation. Yeah, because before it was like basically Gem of Isolation plus the Whirlpool now, and then when you added Gem of Isolation with it, it was just... you. Yeah, you it was like have. a Hades ult that you could barely escape. Cognitive Gaming, speaking three. of the Fire Giant, we just talked about it as maybe the key to victory here. It's a bait for now, but Dare to Care a little bit too wise. Naja still pulled to her his target, I'm sorry, with the Armillary Sash blessing. there uh, against the Magi's Blessing. And a Tully. change in the last patch. Tully, crowd controlled out. That knockup from Tier just so valuable. You saw the beads come out, but it does not stop the knockup. Uh, Anatoly there looking to start a fight, it seemed, but the rest of Eager wasn't on the same page. You saw they were actually trying to run away from Bickham being aggressive so, uh, I want to put something here, right? Cognitive Gaming, they get a pick, and then it took them about 15 seconds to realize they wanted to re-engage on the Fire Giant. Like, it, that just seems like that's a missed opportunity, right? They find that pick, and then they don't immediately go back and start the pressure back up. They allow Eager to kind of formulate a plan. Bickham taking quite a bit of damage from not only the Mud Puddle, but they also Dare to Care's player damage. And they just let Naja out there die. You're absolutely right. Kraken, it's going to hit a couple, but mostly A just out. But a couple of actors used by Lassus. Now he's trapped off. Even more kills coming their way. 
Can they find the kill on the Thor as well? They will indeed. Zatman, he's likely to die here to home of fame. Meerkat, can he close the distance? One more power cleave. Yes, doesn't matter. Still goes famous. Hates weights. Double kill for him. Four members down for Team Eager. Only dropping Bickham there, so it ends up maybe they know more than we do. They let him die, but they find three more kills. And Polar Bear Mike, the lone Avenger in con. You got to take this one. This is a very hard moment here for Polar Bear Mike. He has no vision here on this Fire Giant. He just has to choose when to go in and hope it's at the right time. If he can get in, though, Athena, one of the best characters in the game at stealing Fire Giants. If he can just get this taunt off, and he does. He's oh, messed up. And he's oh, stealing he the Fire it. Giant. Polar Bear Mike, the god, he takes it away. He's definitely dead here, but he will take that Fire Anatoly, Giant. Anatoly, because he got picked earlier, we actually do see Anatoly. So he's Anatoly's going to have Fire Giant, but that was a huge play. Cog, they finally had the turnaround. While the game, while they had the gold lead the whole time, they weren't team fighting well. That time at that fire joint, outside of letting Bickham die at the beginning, they team fought perfectly. They yeah. were grouped together after the Kraken. They protected one another. They helped Heroin stay alive, and they came out on top in a four. 4-1, but then Polar Bear Mike just walks up and steals the Fire Giant. He, and just he hit him with that, uh, that Lincoln that heart, momentum. right? In the end, it didn't even matter. In the end, it didn't even matter. That's twice now. They tried so hard. I mean, they did. I mean, they really they really had a great team fight. You're right. You broke it down, and then you get everything right. All that momentum. You did 9 out of 10 steps, and then the 10th step of don't let it get stolen by the Athena didn't happen. And they're going to take away Gold Fury as well. Anatoly actually almost taking out Bickham again. And Bickham can't really seem to get anything going in these in these fights at all. Can we take a look at player damage real quick? Uh, as it seems Ymir might get caught out here and he's likely to take a spill as well, yeah. We're gonna I see mean, Homie FA fall. Yeah, Homie FA, yeah, he's done. He's piled in on an Eager now, feeling themselves with that Fire Giant Steel. Playing the aggressor, their shell comes out as well. Herwind is, it might be in a bad spot, but he's gonna dash away there. Uh, Eager though, they're gonna siege down this mid tower. Yeah, easy peasy there for them. Not much Cog can do, and now, you know, it's it was such a big swing, right? We talked about it. Cognitive, it was such a good position for them to take that Fire Giant and take the rest of these outer towers to really expand upon their gold lead. Instead, it's going to go the other way unless they can find a wipe here, essentially. Kraken comes out, hits one, spin the wind active underneath Cog. it. Famous Hate did kill Zapman, so they don't have their hunter damage, but Famous Hate walking out of this one. It looks like the call is a disengage from Cog, but they're a little split up. Taking to the sky now. Here it is, his Famous Hate. Looking for Lasses in the back line. He'll hit with most of the ultimate there. Anatoly gets a kill oh, on the back line onto Bickham and Famous Hate taunted out. No kills for you. Meerkat cleaning that one up onto Lasses. He's stunned out though now, and it's Anatoly walking him down with Heavy Hammer. He just needs one hit that, to make this one a kill, essentially. That Can looked like a triple kill for Famous Hate. Not able to find it. Meerkat now, he's going to try and turn on Anatoly, but he really doesn't have the damage. And now with Bose's movement, now okay. That Eager's going to back off. That was not a good bludgeon, I don't think, right? He has Frostbound here. He could have continued to walk him down and made time for his teammates to come in, but instead they'll play safe and go for the mid camp. All right, what, what happened in that fight, Incon? That fight was really, it looked like Cogton was very unorganized. They had a good turnaround. It looked like they couldn't decide whether they wanted to back off or go back in. Everybody was kind of doing their own thing. There was a large play coming out from the Apollo Famous Hate trying to make a move. He misses his skills and does not kill last. He gets taunted by Polar Bear Mike and then took him out. And that was the end of the fight. And I really think that Jim of Iso, uh, Lassus did pick it up. Uh, he had it for that last I engagement. I think that made a huge difference. We saw Meerkat being stuck in it for a couple more seconds than he would normally be in. And Cogs really re-engaged. Their counter-engage didn't go as fluidly as they would have liked. So Pickup's played a pretty good Naja so far this game, right? We saw the combination happen with Naja into a mere ultimate. One time at a cognitive, it seemed pretty effective. He got a relatively nicely timed Deathbringer. And he's kind of made it happen, but you just didn't get that huge impact you expected out of Naja. And now you're forced to play the very strange and unknown territory of Naja late game, where theoretically your potential is probably the highest DPS that you can achieve in this game. However, having any room to do that in the fights is very difficult. Three Magi's blessings picked up by Team Eager too. I mean, what if you're a Naja? How are you trying? How are you getting into these fights? How are you That's going right. on their back line with no sprint, no anything? It's going to make Nejah's life really difficult. Magi's Blessing, uh, really the largest counter item to Nejah there is. He really needs to be able to go in, immediately stun people, ulti them into the air, take the Hunter out of the fight, situations like that. When you can't get into the back line because everybody has beads plus Magi's Blessing, it's going to make it very difficult to get any damage off. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of the reason why you saw this item, specifically Magi's Blessing, being nerfed in the next patch. Kind of exactly what Eager is demonstrating here. It's such a good luxury item to just buy in its current iteration that it's a little bit of a no-brainer. If you're ahead and you have that extra 2,400 gold, this is the item you go for every time in the 4th or 5th slot, unless maybe you're Poseidon. But honestly, at this rate, I wouldn't be surprised to see Lassus 
build a Hootie, and then sell Vampiric for Magi's Blessing. Dare to Care going very deep. Lassus as well was trying to find it here. And Eagers, they're going to commit three to the left side. Fire Giants not up for about 30 more seconds, though. And Cog, they're trying to respond by cutting them off underneath. And Eagers trying to back, though. Can Maybe a little bit happen. of a lazy Dare back. to Care, I Wall? mean... Wall, stun, there's an Athena ultimate there as well. The first stun's gonna be good, the slow coming out. Amir knocked back by the Poseidon title search. It's huge there, no longer in range to find they the stun. They don't know who they wanted to Last is slowing them down, right side. The rest of the team is chasing. Cognitive Gaming split themselves up there. Maybe they get Polar Bear Mike out of this one. Indeed they will for a crit to Bickham, but oh, they could've had so much more there. That's just like every fight, like they could've had more. And now Anatoly here could be in a lot of trouble. He's going to take to the sky. Not going to take a lot of damage, but all of Cog is going to be waiting for him on landing, but they don't finish it off. Oh, and a four-man crack, and Lassus is going to find a double kill, a triple kill, and he's looking for more. Can you make it into the quadra here? Hurwind and Meerkat dumping off it. <laughs> no, it'll be the triple and it'll take a spill. Hurwind credited for the double in this one. He's forced to Aegis out and he will fall as well. And now it's Zapman basically uncontested here. Meerkat, he does have a lot of take ability, but that stun is going to mean even more in hands. And that's a very, very dead Meerkat. It's a completely dead cognitive gaming. And for the second time in two games, we see Zapman plus one left alone at an objective after a full team wipe for cognitive. 42 kills in 30 minutes in this game, an absolute bloodbath. Cognitive still up by a little bit, but it's all gone now as Fire Giant will go to Eager for the second time. It's just a story of almost could, almost should, almost would. Cog not able to find Anatoly. They're all grouped up. And that's then been their split. I mean, when we came out of the gate oh in this my. split, looking at Cognitive Gaming, in their first few games that came out that I think I broadcasted two of them. He's, it's in hog range, but he, they're just waiting, yeah, they're waiting for, for their team to spawn. And we're going to see Polar Bear, Mike, actually, are, are they going to wait for Lassus as well? Oh, Eager is playing a great, and I, there's no way Ymir is going to come here. And just in case, Dare to Care is going to block him off. And now Eager, they're going to hold the fire giant Incon's and get clapping. it for all five. Yeah. <laughs> that is, can you clap in your mic? That is a veteran <laughs> move if I have ever seen it. They knew the enemy hog threes were dead, that they could wait for their team to get everybody with fire giant after an amazing fight. Absolutely beautiful plays all around. Shout out to Zapman landing a three or four man Medusa ult followed up by Lassus's crack and completely turning around that fight. I mean, yeah, that's, that was erased. what they drafted for, yeah. was that team fight right there. That's yeah, that why was Medusa's strong. Yeah, indeed, yeah, it's that, it's that, it's that Medusa. It, so Medusa brings a level of CC. Granted, is her ultimate out of the hunter position. And um, independently of, of her role, right, that is a fairly good spell. It's basically a mirror freeze with a little bit more range as an ultimate, which generally speaking isn't amazing. But in a role in which CC is basically non-existent and is so heavily commoditized, she's such a good god to draft in this situation when you're looking for a little bit of bonus CC out of your hunter. Really, what other hunter has a better Cupid. team fight? Cupid's than, okay. the only one that even you can even make the argument. But that ability is so easily countered by yes. movement speed, beads, Aegis, Magi's, on and on and on and on. Hell, it's self-diminishing returns itself. So, I mean, it's, it doesn't really have that same amount of power. So... It almost seems like Naja's ult is working against Cog because the idea is, all right, you put him in the air and then Ymir's gonna ult. Yeah. But we the saw all of is Cog just... just group together and Lassus just finds the Kraken. It, Cog baited themselves into the Kraken. There's nothing else more to say about that. Well, uh, Polar Bear Mike, he is perfectly happy to tank this tower up. No real issue, tier two going to fall. And now it's a, uh, it, you know, you would say it maybe is a bend don't break situation for cognitive gaming, but I, I don't see. I mean, they're still level 20s, right? They're still late game. Uh, it's still a fight they can take, but Dare to Care is going to take to the sky and look to go to the back line. So they bait out Zatman's beads, right? So now Naja has to somehow get to the back line and kill him. Dare's taking a ton of Dare damage, too. Tremendous One amount of damage. Bomb. No Mjolnir's a two minute. The ultimate comes out from Duso to try to stop the assault. In comes Tyr, but he doesn't find the Fearless on a Dare to Care. Very important. Dare to Care may die, but it's going to take so long to secure that kill that Lassus is able to take care of Homie Faye. Kraken coming out. It does decent damage to Bickham, but Bickham does kill Lassus. Hurwin now being walked down by Tolly. Not sure he's gonna be able to stop that. Yes, he will go down. Totally bludgeon. Meerkat, one more hit will do it, but he heals himself up and dashes back through. Nicely executed by Meerkat there. Oh, PB Mike, he's down. Famous hate and cog. They hold, but they're not and going after Totally. Tully. Just walked into go. Phoenix, walked out of Phoenix, walked back into Phoenix, and took three tower shots for. Uh, okay, I'm just. A little bit of a misplay coming out from Anatoly, taking a death where he didn't need He lost one. more than 13 experience there. <laughs> it was 13 gold. Excuse Somebody's got to say, huge misplay. I mean, so Tolly, Tolly, you know, a little bit of a, of a you know, head, head scratcher there. But I, It seemed like he wanted to go back in trying to save his team, but then realized he couldn't because he was taking Phoenix. But at that time, he just took one extra shot. So, I mean, 
eager. They were talking about how good they look in game one. One of the better tactically laid out games we've seen. Game number two, a little bit more kind of hectic. We could call it sloppy, you can call it bloody, however you want to say it right. And then they make like this like incredibly astute experience play. They know that where everybody is, they know they can wait and hog and get all five members the buff. And then they go and they make the new team mistake of they forcing all, a play into the base. They also chased kills, right? right into so the, yeah. We see, I, I think the big thing there is that Dare to Care ulted. They wanted to initiate, but Cog nothing, split yeah. their team and they didn't allow the rest of Eager to get to the back line. And instead of saying, okay, I'm just going to waste my ult, they still wanted to go in. They bursted him down and he got nothing out of the fight and took a spill very early. They weren't able to it's, utilize it's, it's, their it's CC. Basically, I'm, it's been, I, I can't even remember a time where I've seen that kind of happen where it's like all level 20s with a competent hunter that with Fire Giant buff, they don't even take the Phoenix, right? They get kills and didn't get the Phoenix. They didn't even scratch the Phoenix. It was complete bloodlust from Eager, and they, they paid for it. Yep. Feeds forced out by last as well. Only 90 second cooldown, but it looks like a fight could break out. Zatman pushed up very far. Zatman with his crit online, a little bit more interested in going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but he dashes out and there's Anatoly in the front lines. Taking Famous the is in the air. is the Apollo, and he'll be able to crash on his Zatman, but they see him now. He's still going back. Last is not a combat blink get back into position. It looks like it was. Famous Hate in a bit of trouble. Kraken coming out off the this mark. The freeze is there. The damage coming up, and Zatman kills Famous Hate before the fight continues. And somehow Zatman's still back battling, killing Hall of Fame. Nearly going, no, it's the crit from Naja. Pick him with a killing spree, and he's continuing in. Hero and killed by Derek on the backside. Meerkat trying to walk down Polar Man Mike. Indeed, he will. Naja, he's going to kill Anatoly. Pick him. Isn't enough. It is indeed. He continues in. Spin to win is there. Derek Okay, with a double now as well in this fight, and he's forced to run. Home of he is he's there. He's gonna try to fight him. My God, what a turn of events! Two tanky targets remaining from Cognitive Gaming. Eager with just Dare to Care alive. What is such a bloody game? I mean, this is a complete bloodbath. 56 yeah. kills. Blink in by Meerkat as well. They may be able to find Dare to Care. He's gonna get CC now. Oh, he's so boys, now dead. Deicide. Meerkat gonna find the kill, and they're likely to push up this tower. Incon, like it, it seemed to be a fight. Right, they baited out last's beads early at that mid camp, which I think was probably the crucial thing. But then the fight looked like it was turning around so well in favor of Eager because they couldn't lock down Zap. Yeah, I mean, that was a really strong fight, honestly, from Cog uh, initiating on that fight. The big problem is, though, is that they don't have any push here. They're not going to be able to get a Phoenix. They lost right. Famous Hate in that fight. And so even though they won the fight, like has been the cognitive story all game, they didn't get that much. They got a single tier two tower, which at this point of the game almost means nothing. Yeah, I mean, one tower still remaining for both teams, actually. And neither team has even touched a Phoenix. I think that's what's most important, is that this game is so close, 36 minutes in. There has not been a single clean team fight for 15, 20 minutes, I'd say. Yeah, that was a strange fight. I mean, as you recall, right, Famous Hate comes crashing in. And Lassus, right, he's like, I got this, boys. Combat blink into position. We're going to get him. He puts out the Whirlpool. It's immediately beads up by Famous Hate. Then he puts on the Kraken. It doesn't do enough damage. It allows Famous Hate to actually get some nice damage on a Zatman. Speaking of damage on a Zatman, whoo! Yeah, that Zatman has burst. been forced out of every fight at the beginning. It just seems he's just not in the best position. Speaking of luxury Magi's, Cog, maybe that's where he should be looking now. At this point, I mean, but it's Zatman. He's. Yeah. Do you really think Zatman's no. going to give up a damage I, item I for utility? I don't think that. I just, I just said that it would be nice. It, it's, it's never going to happen. Speed buff <laughs> given there to Zatman, actually. A very interesting play, taking it away from Dare. Do you like that? I do like that play. End of the game here. Zap's going to be the one carrying you doing the damage. Keep Yusa can alive. make a lot of use of it too, Incon, right? I mean, she does have that passive that says she moves backwards and sideways uh, and doesn't incur the penalty. So that movement speed buff that she has really can translate out fully into this fight. Uh, Zapman now has fully Athena life stolen. Ult. Athena ultimate expended onto Lassus. They're thinking that he was going to go down. Dare to care for Ult as well. Eager has dumped a lot of ultimates here and hasn't found much out of it. Backside though. Famous hate. Aussie proc healing back up with a big crit. Can he stay alive? No, he can't. Dare to care with a kill. Very low Zapman as well. And trying not to bait themselves, I think, is Cognitive Gaming and going for that Zatman kill. Crafty comes out and hits two. Meerkat and Homofei, very tanky targets, still alive for now. Homofei with a nice channel ultimate, is good positioning. Anatoly takes a ton of burst and will go down to Heroin as well. Dare to care now in the back line, but Zatman's rotated back in. Life stealing himself back up. Big 700 damage crits will be enough to take out the tier. Three members remaining of Eager, three members remaining of Cognitive. Naja and Amir too low to continue to fight. One crit from Zatman able to erase him. Fire Giant. You have to finish kills. That is. 
two or three fights in a row now where Zapman escapes with almost no health after after he's out of position. And it's, it's like you said, right? They want to lock down Zapman, but they don't want to bait themselves. But at some point, you got to pick some god that has to commit to him and finish him off. Because it's twice be now, he's come back into fights that Cog should have won cleanly and oh, turned it around. Hurwin, and now a Hurwin. race with a big crit. Homo face overextended as well. One more shot from Zapman is enough. Moving in is big. I'm sure you'll get the kill. But at what cost, as Breaky would say, it's another triple kill coming out and another DSI was it, was it Zatman for Eager. Was Zatman 1 and 4? Zatman was, was 1 and 4. Can we take a look at damage here real quick as this is going to be uncontested. Zatman sitting second on ah, damage. That's fake damage. It's fake damage. It's fake damage. Old, old Vulcan, old Guardian Vulcan fake yeah, damage. Yeah, physical mail. It's fake damage. Hollow ulting in here. Yeah, okay. Trying to make the play, but I mean, he Eager's forced like, right, all, fine, He forced him off Fire Giant. That's the most important. Sprints are activated by both the Hunters. Ultimate coming here from Zatman. Is Famous Hate going to do this? Aussie Prime no, is there. That, nope, nope, nope. That nope. was Polar Bear Mike. Yep. Blocking the shots. That was a fantastic play there by Polar Bear Mike. Blocking those shots away. Uh, otherwise, Zatman would have died there. If Zatman would have died, they would have been unable to do the Fire Giant, and they're going to be able to do it now before Homo, uh, before he ever gets here. Yeah, here. Mirkai not going to make it in time. He blinks forward, but now he realizes he may have made a horrible mistake as he runs away. <laughs> he's He's got Magi's online, but I mean, Lassus might just be trying to burn it, and he's actually going to get crippled out of Fearless, but I mean, Meerkat's too tanky. But now, Eager, this is the second time they've gotten Fire Giant. They're in the same position. Everyone, full item builds outside of maybe one last item or finishing off their active. And now it seems like Eager's going to think more strategically about this, back, spend their gold, and come back fresh. So... Are you are you revising your position, Incon? Does Eager take this one now that we've gone an extra 20 minutes since we last checked in? Now that this has gone the length, I think this is in Eager's hands. It is their game to win or lose. It's going to be up to them. Cognitive at this point has to wait for Eager to make a graph. mistake. As you see, the spectator pointing it out there. Huge swings in this game. I mean, swings so big that you can't even see the earlier leads in the 30-minute mark. I mean, it was, it was a 6,000 gold and a 5,000 experience lead for Cog. And now went all the way up to basically the same on the other side and has come back down again. A very, very tight game. Two and a half thousand gold at 40 minutes is essentially nothing. And look at these time spent dead. Lass is struggling a little bit here. Dying a lot in the Nine later stages of the game. But I mean, he, he seems to be getting... Uh, I, it looks like Homie F.A. is aiming for Lassus every fight when really I think that Homie F.A. needs to be locking down Zatman. Zatman's the problem right now. Yeah. Lassus' damage just isn't as powerful uh, as it was earlier on. They need Homie FA and they need Naja to make it to the back line and find those kills. Malice, boys. Malice and Naja. Match made in heaven? Or not? Well, I mean, the extra crit chance of Naja honestly help you get out those attacks more often. The pause coming out here by Hurwind. Yeah, it looked like Meerkat had DC'd there, so... Uh, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, Malice yeah, gives a little bit of bonus damage on the ultimate. It's, it's, that's really maybe the ultimate failing of Naja in the Pro League is that he's so one-dimensional past the laning phase you know, and, and, and a lot of people cite, you know, Magic's Blessing and Beads, and, and, and sure, those are mechanical issues with the god, and it, it really limits your options, but at the end of the day, it's like you're such a slave to your ultimate. You have to itemize completely for your ultimate. Uh, it doesn't allow him maybe some more of the Zap's options. Zap's Beads are forced Zap's out beads, early. Yeah, That's important. important. Yeah. So now, Bickham, can you find a way to the back line? Can Amir move forward and get Bickham there? Because you got to think, Bickham's ultimate is going to take Zapman down to about 50% the HP. Here it is. Can he take him up to the sky? No, he can't take him for a ride. The Kraken ultimate comes out. Falling very, very low is the rest of Cog. But somehow they're holding for now. Can they make it back to the well and heal? Meerkat trying to juke. Not enough. The slow from the Whirlpool will kill him. Lassus aggressively moving into the base with a combat blink. It's a four versus two now. And this could very well be it for Eagle. They'll take out a couple of bonus Phoenixes to they're, weaken they're, that Titan. They're definitely going to play it safe here. Hurwind is still alive. He still has bombs. Famous hate as well. They can't full commit to this unless they can catch someone out here. It's four versus two, though. Can they find a kill? Oh, and Hurwin's dead. Now it's a 4v1. Famous Hate's going to dive into the back line, but they're going to full commit onto him. And no one else is spawning for quite some time. Eager is going to take game two and tank the set clean. I want to say cleanly, actually. Game two is not clean uh, at all. Not a clean, not a clean second game.